So a common ion has an effect on solubility. We did an experiment last week where we looked at this. We looked at calcium iodate solubility in pure water and in a solution that contained a fairly high concentration of iodate ion. So we look at solubility or dissolution as an equilibrium. Here's our solid. Uh, solid concentrations do not change, so they're left out of equilibrium expressions. Um, but they're solid here and it can dissolve to form these ions. These ions can recombine to reform the original solid. It's an equilibrium. So if we add some fluoride, an ion that is common to this compound, it's one of the ions that's present, adding a common ion shifts the equilibrium to the left and will lower the solubility of the ionic compound. That make sense? So let's calculate the molar solubility of calcium fluoride in a solution containing 0.25 molar calcium nitrate. So it's always helpful to start out with looking at the equation. So here we have calcium fluoride. in equilibrium with calcium ions and the two fluoride ions. So if we look at this without the common ion, um, Molar solubility is how many moles of this compound dissolve per liter. So we get one calcium for every unit of this, one mole of calcium for every mole of this. So we could say that the concentration of calcium is equal to the molar solubility. And then um, when we get one calcium, we get two fluorides, and so this would change by 2s. But what we've got here is, um, so that's like in pure water, let's just divide that off. What we've got here is that the, f the calcium concentration is actually 0 0.250. Bless you. So our KSP, So we can look at KSP is equal to the calcium concentration and times the fluoride concentration squared. This is an equilibrium constant and so when we plug in the actual equilibrium concentrations regardless of the source, um, they should fulfill this relationship. So here we're starting with 0.25 molar calcium ion. Um, we can ignore this over here because that's a solid. So we can, we can set up an ice table for this. Our initial fluoride concentration is zero. And then when this changes, the only way it can move is to the right. It can't go to the left because there's no fluoride. So it's going to come to the right, and so we're going to have a change of plus x here and of plus 2x for the fluoride. And so in terms of x, we can say this is uh, 0 0.250 plus x, and this is 2x. So we can plug those into our equation here, so 0.250 plus x times 2x squared. When we were doing so many weak acid things that had a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, some of us forgot that if there's a coefficient here, there needs to be an exponent on that term. So now we could solve for x. 
because uh, we know what KSP is. It's 1.46 times 10 to the negative 10th. So, do we think that x is small? If we look at this constant, this constant is very small, which tells us the reaction only goes to the right a little bit, and in order for this plus x to matter, x would have to be more than 5% of 0.25, and it most certainly is not. So we can use the x is small. Of course, you can plug this into your solver. That's absolutely fine. So I'm going to use x is small, and then we come up with 0.25, and that would be 4x squared. And so I can solve that. It's going to be the square root of 1.46 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 0.25 and divided by 4. Anybody else get that? If I rearrange this in my head, I might have screwed it up. Okay. Is that the molar solubility? Maybe, maybe not. So we solve x. We solve for x, and then sometimes it's tempting to say, well, x is my answer, right? And put that down. Well, sometimes x is the answer, and sometimes x is just another step in finding the answer. That's part of why I wrote this out up here. When, when this is dissolving, the calcium ion concentration would be equal to the, um, the molar solubility. The fluoride ion concentration would be equal to twice the molar solubility. Now, in this problem, we had a bunch of added calcium. So we could conceivably figure out how much was left or something, but we don't need to do that because the fluoride ions, this stuff is just coming from the calcium, right? So if we look at the fluoride ion concentration, it's 2 times x. Um, it's 2s, so in this case, x does equal the molar solubility. So the molar solubility under these conditions, 1.21 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Yes? <laughs> well, you, you have to think about how, what does this look like if I don't have a common ion, and, and which of these would represent x, which of those can I find easily? Um, you know, if I ended up with a total fluoride concentration instead of um, x being two times the fluoride ion concentration, then I'd have to divide it by two. Um, you might have to do something like that. What's, what is the um, molar solubility of this in pure water? It would be, let's get our bet. It'd be the, uh, the, let's change this color here. It'd be KSP, and it would be S, times the quantity 2s squared, right? Which is 4s cubed. So if we want to find that molar solubility, it's the cube root of 1.46 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 4.
So in pure water, the molar solubility is 3.3 times 10 to the minus 4. By adding that extra calcium ion, the, the solubility has gone down. Any questions? pH can also have an effect on solubility. So if we look at magnesium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide is a, is a strong base in that it's a, um, a metal hydroxide, but it's not very soluble. When it dissolves, um, it, it separates into magnesium ions and two hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ion here is going to be affected by the pH of the solution. So by changing the pH of the solution, we're changing the concentration of this. We essentially have a common ion effect, right? High, high hydroxide ion concentration would be high pH, and that's gonna cause equilibrium to shift to the left. It's going to be less, con um, less soluble. If we have um, a low hydrogen ion concentration, I mean a low hydroxide ion concentration, which would be a low pH. Then we have an excess of hydronium ions. Those are gonna react with the hydroxide, removing them and causing this equilibrium to shift to the right. This is why sometimes when we do an acid-base titration and we're trying to dissolve that weak acid, it, it doesn't really wanna dissolve. And the instructions say, well, go ahead and start titrating and just make sure that it's all dissolved by the time you get to your endpoint. Because in the process of titrating, you are removing one of the ions and you're actually increasing the solubility. Any questions? So if you have an ionic compound with a strongly basic <clears throat> or a weakly basic anion, then the solubility will increase when it becomes more acidic because the increasing hydronium ion concentration will react with that either strongly basic or weakly basic anion, removing it from solution and causing the solubility to increase. Common ions that this happens with are hydroxide, sulfide, and um, carbonate. So rainwater is naturally acidic because it's got dissolved CO2 in it, which forms carbonic acid. And so this naturally acidic rainwater, it's not very acidic, just a little bit, it can dissolve limestone, calcium carbonate, as it goes through the ground. And so if you have large amounts of, of calcium carbonate of limestone, as the water goes through, it dissolves it, and you can end up with these huge underground caverns because the limestone has been removed. And then when you get dripping water that's saturated with calcium carbonate, it falls and it can form stalactites and stalagmites. And because as the water drips here, it, it, it begins to evaporate. It's already saturated. And so as it evaporates, it becomes super saturated or things precipitate out. And that's how those formations grow. So this is more of a qualitative question. Which compound, iron carbonate or lead bromide, lead three bromide, is more soluble in acid than in base? And the dreaded question, why? The dreaded question, right? Because the answer is fine, but then you have to actually put words together to explain or answer why. Well, what do we have here? We've got iron carbonate and we've got lead three bromide. So we could write the equations for these just to see what we've got. Wait, that's not iron three, that's gotta be iron two. So if the acidity of a solution affects the solubility, it must have an effect on one of the ions that's formed. 
So are lead three or bromide ions, are those acids, bases, conjugate acids, conjugate bases? Well, bromide is the conjugate base of a strong acid, but that's pH neutral, right? Because a strong acid is not going to combine with hydrogen ions. Um, Fe2+, plus, not to be confused with Fe3+, plus, which does have acidic properties, doesn't really do anything either. But what about this mislabeled carbonate? <laughs> Is that a basic ion? Is that related to an acid? Yeah, there's carbonic acid. And it's friend hydrogen carbonate. And then the carbonate ion. So these are all, these are weak acids. And so this is the conjugate base of weak acids, right? So if I add, acid to this, what's going to happen to the carbonate? It can react and form hydrogen carbonate ion and ultimately carbonic acid, right? And so that would be lowering the carbonate concentration. And so would that increase the solubility? Yeah. So low pH Acidic solution means I've got extra H pluses. And those H pluses will combine with this to form weak acids. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, so at, at an acidic solution, um, by definition, means that the hydrogen ion concentration is larger than the hydroxide ion concentration. That's what acidic means. So we've got extra hydrogen ions, and so those can react with the carbonate and form they can form hydrogen carbonate, and then they can also form carbonic acid. And, and these are in equilibrium, and so if there's carbonate present, it can combine with this to become hydrogen carbonate, which, you know, can then combine with more hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid. And these, these guys are not carbonate ion, and so they're removing carbonate ion. It's still soluble but it's not carbonate ion anymore. And so we're reducing this concentration and that will cause this equilibrium to go to the right, which is increasing its solubility. The good thing about my exams is I hate grading questions on an exam where it asks why, because then I have to evaluate what is a good enough answer and what is not a good enough answer. So I won't ask you a question like this on an exam, but you do need to know how to think about this.